Well, good day, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the video blog. <laughs> you throw one little thing into our mix, and we're completely lost. It's the Creek Week. It's the Creek Week. Hey, guess we just met uh, the latest AC3 Church celebrity. We did. It's the princess of the church, <laughs> Janora Gelly. Janora. So great. Alex yeah. and Bree's baby came by to visit the staff. That was really nice. Met yeah. Alex's parents, who are lovely people. Wonderful. And that was really cool. Arizona folks, so they're finding it a little chilly at 80 degrees. They said. But uh, enjoying it, nevertheless. So um, we are, we've just started a series, which uh, hopefully you all saw the first installment. Uh, we are talking about trust issues in September. Not like this is relevant at all, but uh, <laughs> isn't this kind of like a, really a summary of where what, what we've been left with? Uh, at, at the end of two years of massive controversies, we have suspicious minds. It's like, isn't there, there's a song. The Elvis song, yes, indeed. Suspicious minds, suspicious minds. Wait, wait what was the, I, I, I have no recollection of the context of that song other than just, I, I think, think it's, it's in, talking in about a relationship. relationship. It's a relationship. She's suspicious trouble. of him. They're both suspicious. They're both suspicious. We've been left with suspicious minds. Well, in, in our culture, we've been left with suspicious minds. It, it reminds me of a conversation I had recently where the, this person I didn't know terribly well, and they opened up the conversation with a question, who do you think won the last election? And I went, <laughs> That's their opener? That was their opener. I went, <laughs> Biden? And they said, with a question mark? And uh, I said, well, I'm wondering why you're asking that question, but it was like a, a bit of a litmus test. Yeah, yeah. As to whether I could trust you. Right, right. That was exactly what it was It was out there. So so that's the level of suspicion yeah. we're talking about. In other words, this conversation probably isn't going to go anywhere if you answer this question wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, I, let's I, can't, basically... I can't trust probably if you were to give me a cookie, yes. I wouldn't eat it because <laughs> you're probably a murderer and have poisoned it because you think this way about that issue. That's how suspicious we yeah. are, Dan. I, I, it's, well, we're in a bad spot. I feel like we we're in a really bad spot. Um, and so uh, in, in a world like this, uh, le left us so cynical, it's like that, that cynicism has bled through all our institutions, right? Like if you've ever seen, and we did it this week, uh, you guys were there, you saw the Mentimeter we did, and we're kind of looking at our levels of trust, right? Uh, trust in government, trust in policing, trust in teachers, trust in pastors. You know, like just, you know, there's no nothing, you know, uh, trying to be, it, pull out any institution. Mm -hmm. And the trust has just fallen like off a table. Yeah. So where does that leave us? I mean, I can only trust myself, I guess. Yeah, right. We covered that this yeah. last week. And, and you know, finally, I, part of the problem is that um, these issues have basis. Yes. Right? right. I mean, the reality is that, you know, well, back in the day when we were kids and back when the earth was still cooling, uh, you know, you trusted, you know, pastor, you know, mm -hmm, priest, yeah. you know, that's where sure. all these are trustworthy. Yeah. Your school teacher, yeah. member of the school board. Well, that's an upstanding member of the society. Policeman. Well, you could always, that's what I was trained. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're in trouble. You go right to a policeman. Mm -hmm. Well, now we've seen over and over again that, you know, that the police officers can't necessarily be trusted. Yeah. That's not a, there's a politicians. I mean, come on. Uh, well, and, and one person said, uh, back in the, let's say the 80s or 90s, if Walter Cronkite said it at 10 o'clock last night, you were talking about it around the water coolers if it happened. And it didn't matter what your political persuasion was. Everyone had a basis of sort of a, a, an established body of facts from which they then had differences. Right. But they trusted at least the basic web of reality. Yeah. <laughs> that is what's missing. Yeah. We don't even trust that we're operating in the same web of reality so, on some basic things. And so given that, what you're left with is kind of covered it right, right. yourself. Yeah. Um, so we talked about this, that, that Jesus also had reasons to be suspicious of people. It's not like people are perfectly trustworthy. And so, so but if we only trust ourselves, we, we are set up to be so in isolation and we, we uh, even can't have even access to, to actual knowledge. So it, trusting requires risk. That's what we're realizing yeah, yeah. is that trusting requires risk and it's risking that is we become risk averse. Mm. So now we're going to talk about people, Dan, and it's like, think, think the relational, you know, our relational uh, uh, fabric has been frayed. So you're going to talk about that this week. How do we recover that? Well, you know, word comes to mind that's been really important in my own um, spiritual journey, and that's vulnerability. And when we talk mm, about uh, trusting yeah. people again, I think, I, I think as a baseline, just to kind of give away, mm -hmm. 
I'm preaching this week? Yes. Okay. So um, I'll be in Canada. Congratulations. Yeah, or thanks. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, depending on <laughs> your point of view. So uh, vulnerability is a really profound word. What it means is to place oneself in the potential of being harmed. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think we think, well, I'm going to trust again, means that you lose the fear that there's no reason to fear being harmed yeah, again. And that's great. not what trust yeah, is. No. Trust is knowing that there's still a chance yes. that you could get harmed and you do it anyway. Yeah. That's what real trust is. And so, so it's, it's like, um, it's like waiting. You've talked about this. It's like waiting to not feel fear mm-hmm. to do something. You're probably going to always feel afraid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You still do the thing that you've reasoned through, that God's led you to, that wise counsel has been sought. Mm-hmm. Still have the feeling of fear, but do it. Trust is exactly the same mm. thing. And so it's learning maybe the boundaries mm-hmm. of where my uh, my own fear is, and I'm going to choose to be vulnerable, Yeah, which is yeah. scary. <laughs> so we're going to learn if there's good reasons for us to be vulnerable. And I think in the light of the gospel, there is. We have these resources to be able to take trust risks. So I hope that we're learning that uh, these days that um, in a world that's frayed and utterly suspicious that uh, we stand out and we stand out as being people who give the gift of trust. And uh, sometimes that is unearned, uh, but it's nevertheless a gift in the same way that love is unconditional and is unearned. So, all right, Alan Creek, we... um, We'll see you here this weekend. Uh, Don't forget, and Investigations is starting last Monday of this month. So you might know a resident skeptic in your life has some hard questions about the faith in these days of post-Christian skepticism. We would love to take that on in a loving and respectful way. Hey, have a great trip up to uh, Moose Land. Thanks, eh? There's also beavers. There's beaver and and moose. there will be igloos as well. And we play hockey. And it, is it yeah, hockey season in, it's in almost, September? No, not quite. Eh? When but there will be. It will be. It will come about in October. Eh? October. <laughs> it's the, the time the pucks fly. They oh, return yeah. from the Yukon and they migrate <laughs> south to Toronto. <laughs> Toronto south of the Yukon, right? Sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> you have your Canada just perfect. perfect. Hey, there's 13 provinces. No, there's not. You dope. How many? Nine? No, there's... Thirteen? There's, no, there's ten provinces, three and territories. three territories, but thirteen things Yes, in there's Canada. thirteen things. And the newest one is none of it. <laughs> Correct. Good work. None of it. Uh-huh. None of it? I didn't name it, man. <laughs> <laughs>